Hi, I'm Gina Dinello, and welcome to Ancient Stones. Today's adventure brings us to a magnificent national monument located in the Verde Valley of Northern Arizona. Montezuma's Castle and Montezuma's Well gives us a glimpse of a moment in time long ago, of a culture that offers both wisdom and mystique to this day. Uh, my name is Vincent Randall. I am an, uh, I'm a Tano Apache, which is what the anthropologists call us. We call ourselves Dilze, which is a subdivision of the Ne. The ne would be equivalent to like the people or the human beings. And the design is a sub-branch of, of the human beings, which is named, uh, comes from the word delzea, which means hunting. And so we're known as the hunting group. We, we call this place Tusitzel, which means broken water, in other words to emerge from the underworld and to come out through here, through broken water. And today the well is very significant to us and, and we still have our people come and pray and they um, use their stones to, uh, to pray with. Uh, it is a area to come for pilgrimage. And, uh, but that's how significant it is to us. Very sacred, a holy place. But we lived in the underworld and, and uh, things were not exactly right, that things were out of hand, that uh, all the different uh, values that we're supposed to have went down the drain, so to say. People were dishonest, people were lying, people were using witchcraft against each other. And our story goes that through different means of uh, our holy people praying and, and they were shown to this world and that our emergence was through where the well is today, to this world, a world of plenty as uh, even bi biblical says, milk and honey. Uh, one of my, uh, I think it was my great uncle, uh, I brought him here when he was 94 years old. And he was in, he was in this country um, back in when he was growing up. And there's a place just down the road here, Beaver Creek. And uh, there was a big, Apache camp there. There were a lot of holy things that happened and, and it was connected with the well and so forth. And so when I brought him back, he told me about it and he went back and showed how you're supposed to be reverent and how to pray in this area. So yes, it's very important for traditional people that will still believe in, in these things. When we do prayers and all of these other things, it, it, it's, a, it's between the Almighty and yourself. And it comes straight from the heart and your soul. And it's not something that, shall we say, that may be written down that you can read or, or, or memorize or something that is, is natural. The, our perspective on the well is, of course, is a very sacred religious aspect to us. And I know that Pharaoh Sakakaku is is here today too in making some comments and he is an old time friend of mine. My name is Pharaoh Sikakaku. I'm a member of the Hopi tribe, Hopi Nation, also a member of the Snake Clan. Each Hopi represents himself with a clan title because that's how they associate to each other throughout the land of the Hopi. My clan, the Snake, 
really didn't come here, but we know of this place. But it was the water clan that brought the serpent and left it here. But this became one of the most sacred springs. The Hopis call it Yuvukava. The Hopis believe that this is endless. There's a fork underneath there. One goes north, one goes south, because south is where we came from. North is the direction we're going to. And this is the place where the serpent is sending the moisture to the Hopi land today. So this is a very sacred springs because we believe that water is life. Without water, we want, nothing would live. So everything that, we, that provides life comes from water. And then, of course, from the sun. Sun, without the sun, we would not, we would not survive as well. The water, the, the sun, the plants, and the human all provide the cycle of life here on this earth. So we all depend on one another. And the river that runs through here is Hochikavaya. And there are several villages were built around this because this was a prime land because of the rivers. And there were a lot of snow and a lot of rain through here. So it was really a good place to settle for a while. And after several years of the provisions build up, then they would move because they believe that they're still on their way to another place. When there is a drought, uh, the water clan members come all the way down here, they get some, some of this water and then they take it home and they use it in their prayer ceremonies. And then they use it to sing their songs so that in, in hope that it will bring moisture and rain and, and the snow. So this spring is very, very, very sacred. And the people that were here before, the people that the, the archaeological sites that you see, the ruins that you see around here, people actually lived there. So we believe that they're still here. They're still, the remains are still here. So the spirits are still here. So we, we make prayer for this for these people. And we bring them. We bring to them and we pray to them. We pray to them to bring us better, good life or continue the moisture that they provided, continue the food that we have uh, had for many years, provide the health and the good way of life so that it will never uh, disintegrate from us, so that we could use this to continue life after this world ends. This is our prayers. This morning when I came down, I did a prayer here. Montezuma Well is a, a really a unique area. It's almost like a visual shock. You come out of the high desert, walk up the trail, and suddenly you look at this incredible oasis, a large a pond. It's an underground uh, spring. Uh, the uh, large uh, underground chamber had collapsed probably 11,000 or so years ago, and it's a, a spring-fed well very unique uh, habitat there because of the dissolved carbon dioxide gas it's about 600 times higher than, than normal aquatic environments and so that's why there's no fish are able to survive in Montezuma well we have uh, lots of turtles basking on the, the, the branches that stick into the water and also there's muskrat and beaver that live at the well there's an area at the well called the outlet where you can actually see the water go into the ditch system. And today, it's, the water is ir uh, used for irrigation downstream. What they did is they diverted the water from the well. And I didn't mention, the well puts out about a million and a half gallons of water a day. Just incredible. And they diverted the water from going into Beaver Creek, diverted it into a series of ditches and uh, they used uh, digging sticks, about four foot long sticks uh, with sharp ends, pointed ends. They used uh, makeshift hose with stone tools to do the digging. So it's ama amazing how, how uh, well that they did. More on Ancient Stones when we return.